Hello and welcome. I'm Tim Moffitt. I'm a professional agriculture comedian and I'm also a dairy farmer and I'm a professional hoof trimmer. And as a hoof trimmer, that's where I get a lot of my jokes. I've trimmed thousands of cows, a few hundred goats, and even did a pedicure on my cousin's girlfriend. Today I will show you how to operate and maintain your new trimming tool, the Hoof Boss, made by Boss Tools. Throughout this video, you will learn how to assemble, operate, set up, and safely use your new trimmer. Before we get started, let's talk about some important details you need to know, like regular hoof maintenance. As a rule of good hoof care and overall health for your animals, it is best to trim every five to six weeks. At Boss Tools, we recommend you develop a regular trimming schedule, which may require more or less often trimming, depending on the natural wear of your animal's hooves. Warning. Never attempt intricate or complicated hoof care problems without consulting with a professional or a veterinarian first. Using the hoof boss without basic hoof care knowledge and anatomy can be dangerous for you and the animal. Whew, glad that's over. Listen, with a little bit of practice, some time, and my expert knowledge, you'll be trimming your animal's hooves in no time. Keep in mind that in time, with some practice, you will be able to trim hooves faster than the traditional way. But this will take practice. Please don't think that you can just zip right through them day one. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. The safety guard is preset at the factory, but you may need to adjust it so you can fully protect your fingers during operation. Always make sure the grinder is unplugged before adjusting the safety guard. To adjust the safety guard, first loosen the set screw slightly. Then push the guard into the desired position. Make sure it is fully protects your fingers from the chain disc. Finally, re-tighten the set screw. Just be sure not to over-tighten it. The slit or the opening of the safety guard does not have to be completely closed or the two sides pulled together for the guard to be tight and secure. Remember, always make sure the guard cannot move freely before turning the grinder on. So as you can see, I've got my safety guard on to protect my fingers from the debris. I'm all ready to go. Just make sure when you tighten this screw, you don't over tighten it. You don't need to, just be nice and gentle. You want to stay below these air vents. If you block these air vents, it overheats. So stay below it when you hold it. The big thing about holding the hoof boss is you want to hold it in such a way that you have control. You don't want to choke up too high, you don't want to choke up too low. That way you have more control of it. If the animal does kick, it doesn't come fly back and give you a new mouthpiece. So, that's holding it properly. First, always make sure the grinder is unplugged before changing the disc. Next, insert the hex key into the center screw in the middle of the grinder's head. Press the locking button on the underside of the grinder and simultaneously turn the hex key counterclockwise. Once the screw's out, remove the attachment washer and any disc already in the grinder. Put the screw and washer in the middle of the new disc and align the screw with the hole in the middle of the grinder's head. Finally, to lock the disc into place, press the locking button while simultaneously turning the hex key clockwise to tighten the screw. Remember not to over tighten it. Make sure the disc is secure and cannot fall out before turning on the grinder. When assembling the chain disc, you'll need either the four tooth or the eight tooth, two attachment disc, and the attachment washer from the tool. Start by noting the shape and the texture of the attachment discs. One side will appear rough and concave while the other side is smooth and dome shaped. Each attachment also contains two straight edges along the center hole. The attachment washer contains the same straight edges which are used to align the discs. Notice the placement of the tooth and the raker on the chain. The raker should be on the left and the tooth on the right. Start by placing one of the attachment discs on an even surface with the rough side facing up. Then place the chain on top of the bottom disc. Place the next attachment disc with the rough side towards the chain. Making minor adjustments will secure the chain between the two discs. Be sure to align straight edges and both the attachment disc and the attachment washer 
when assembling the chain disc. When you have the disc and washer assembled, place the set screw through the center hole and attach to head of the tool. Tighten your set screw by using your hex key, but be sure not to over tighten, just like before. Proper sharpening the blade will make trimming not only safer, but easier as well. All you need is the diamond coated chain file and a pair of safety goggles to get started. It's recommended to do this about every 20 to 25 trims. Before you begin, make sure the disc is clean and free from oil, dirt, and debris. Set your file in the notch on the front of the tooth. The curve of the file should exactly fit the curve of the tooth, and the top of the file should be flush with the top of the tooth. Slide the file across the face of the tooth, using a moderate twisting motion to discharge metal chips or fillings. Push the file from the longer side of the tooth to the shorter side. Check the clearance of the rakers, which are curved hook shaped links between the teeth. They should clear each tooth by about one tenth of an inch and file down any raker that sits too high. When you first get your hoof boss, it's best to practice on a piece of wood before using it on a live hoof. We recommend you use a 4x4 block of cedar or redwood as their densities most resemble that of a hoof. Remember, never turn on the disc when the disc is in direct contact with the wood as this could cause much harm. Holding the grinder properly, slightly angle the disc perpendicular to the wood. Gently pull the grinder closer towards you as if you were trimming a hoof. Use a smooth pulling motion and don't chop at the wood. The disc is designed to flow easily across the hoof without any resistance. There's no need to force the disc while trimming. Apply light trimming while making a cut, as the disc will do the work for you. This feature helps to decrease the wrist, hand, and arm pain traditionally experienced during trimming. The hoof boss will cut backwards as well. The motion is the same and the back of the grinder shaft will prevent you from laying the disc too flat. You can control the depth of any cut by using the combination of the disc angle, speed you move across the disc, and pressure you apply to the disc. If you hold the disc at 90 degree angle but apply no pressure, the disc will barely cut. If you hold the disc almost flat, the disc will barely cut. This angle provides you with a lot of control but is not practical for trimming hooves as it is too little material. Keep practicing on the wood until you find the best angle, speed, and pressure that you are comfortable using. Always remember to keep your hands away from the spinning disc when the grinder is turned on. Don't reach underneath or attempt to remove material while the disc is rotating. After you turn the grinder off, wait until the disc has stopped spinning before putting the tool down. And don't jam the disc into the wood to stop it rotating prematurely. So you've had a few practice swings, now it's time to get up to the big leagues and step up to the batter's box. There's a lot of variations on how to set up your work area for trimming some animals and there's a lot of different animals. I'm going to show you the basics on how to set up your work area. Always make sure the grinder is switched off before plugging it in. Always wear eye protection and heavy duty gloves while trimming. The chain disc rotates at 13,000 RPM and throws off almond shaped slivers at high speeds that can hurt your eyes if you're not wearing proper eye protection. When using your hoof boss, one of the important things is to make sure you have a grounded extension cord. If you have a GFI plug in your barn, you may want to make sure you're using it. For safety reasons, GFI is the only way to go for an extension cord. One of the most important things in your work area is to keep you between the electrical cord and the animal. So when you come to your work area, place it to the outside and you stand in the middle between the cord and the animal as to keep you both safe. And above all, remember, safety first. Now that you've learned how to assemble your hoof boss and set up your work area, it's time to learn about some different trimming techniques. To do that, we're going to have one of our Hoof Boss experts explain this in more detail to you. I'm 
My name's Glenn Rowland. We're going to trim this goat using the hoof boss. It's an eight bladed blade. We start on the front feet, start with our front left foot, and work our way around to the back. Start by taking it off on the inside, get, getting the pad took off. It's already got her back down to where she's almost flat. And the motion with the blade is backward or forward. If you'll just be easy with it. With the shears up on the bulb of the foot, where you try to get that level, get a mushroom effect. You'll take it and just pull it straight down. Looking at the white lines in the foot. There you go. You can take level the bulb on out. It's pretty well roughed in, but you can see, you can take a little more off this inside claw. Next time it wouldn't be quite as bad. Uh, and it certainly doesn't take near as long. But for a goat not to have been trimmed uh, in a year, We've got her down pretty flat and about as close as I'd like to carry her right now. And uh, I'd give her a little while, come back in there and re trim her. Always make sure you are wearing proper eye protection, heavy duty gloves, long legged pants or chaps, and a dust mask if necessary during the operation. Never turn the tool on when the disc is in direct contact with the hoof. Before trimming with the hoof boss, make sure the animal and the hoof are secure and free of any dirt and debris. For best safety practices, we recommend fully restraining the animal and the hoof by using a stand, flip, or squeeze chute and tying down the leg to prevent movement while trimming. The chain disc can be used to trim large herds, flocks, or groups, as well as fix abnormal hooves and diseases. When trimming with the 8 tooth chain disc, hold the chain at a slight angle to the hoof and smoothly glide the tool back and forth from heel to toe. Move the tool in a straight path on the edge of the hoof and in a more rounded path when you get to the toe and the edge of the hoof. Do not chop and do not force the disc. You should always position the chain disc at a slight angle to the hoof. If you hold the disc at a flatter angle to the hoof, the tool will be less aggressive and will remove smaller amounts of the hoof. The lighter you trim, the more control you have over the tool. The hoof boss can be used to fix ulcers and abscesses. The best way to learn how to use the hoof boss for fixing laminitis problem is to practice different techniques as you encounter different problems. It will not take long before you are comfortable using the hoof boss to perform all kinds of hoof care tasks. Always use caution when fixing laminitis or hoof disease problems by seeking the experience of a veterinarian or professional hoof trimmer before attempting on your own. Remember, the desired result is to have the hoof properly protect, support, and balance the animal. Pay close attention to the sole height as it should be equal to the hoof wall. Lay the hoof flat on an even surface, being sure to look at it from the side. Ensure that the heel and the toe are level and the animal's weight is evenly dispersed across the hoof. For extremely overgrown hooves, you may want to start by trimming small portions of the hoof and come back two to three weeks to trim more. This will slowly set the hoof back to its proper angle while not making too aggressive of a cut at one time. This abrasive disc is our toughest flat disc and will take off stubborn hoof easier than you've ever experienced. If you're looking for a less invasive way to trim your small toed animals, the coarse flat disc is the best option. This disc makes no cuts but aggressively grinds down tough overgrown hooves. Smooth out the hoof and flaky or dead sole material by facing the disc at a slight angle horizontal to the hoof and use a back and forth motion like you would if you were using a rasp or a file. You can trim the heel, sole, wall, toe, and between the toes by angling the disc vertical in the same motion with the coarse flat disc. This disc is best used on overgrown adult hooves and large herds, flocks, or groups. 
This tough abrasive disc will take off stubborn hoof easier than you've ever experienced. If you're looking for a less invasive way to trim your small toed animals, the medium flat disc is the best option. This disc makes no cuts but aggressively grinds down tough hooves. Smooth out the hoof and flaky or dead sole material by facing the disc at a slight angle horizontal to the hoof and use a back and forth motion like you would if you were using a rasp or a file. You can trim the heel, sole, wall, toe and between the toes by angling the disc vertical in the same motion with the medium flat disc. This disc is best used on the average adult hoof and medium sized herds, flocks and groups. This abrasive disc will gently grind down even the smallest of hooves. If you're looking for a less invasive way to trim your small toed animals, the fine flat disc is the best option. This disc makes no cuts but aggressively grinds down the tough hoof. Smooth out the hoof and flaky or dead sole material by facing the disc at a slight angle horizontal on the hoof and use a back and forth motion like you would if you were using a rasp or a file. You can trim the heel, sole, wall, toe, and between the toes by angling the disc vertical in the same motion with the fine flat disc. This disc is best used on small adult and baby hooves. This abrasive disc can be used for detailed corrective work. This precision disc has a dual function. Use this disc to reduce hoof wall height by lightly cutting off overgrown hoof material as well as getting into tight spaces. The V-Groove disc is specifically designed to clean out hoof imperfections while getting into tight spaces to reduce the hoof wall height, clean out sand, cracks, resection infected hooves, and white lines. This disc can be used to trim tight spaces around the frog on a horse and between the two toes of cows, goats, sheep, and pigs. This abrasive disc works on all hooked animals and horns. The cutoff disc is one of a kind. There's no job it can't handle. This disc is used to trim off nail heads or cut small metal, plastic, and hoof cast parts. The cutoff disc can also be used to do resections on infected hooves as well as cut off sections of extremely long and overgrown hoof material. Keep in mind that this will wear down quickly and when purchased individually comes in packages of three. This disc will cut through anything, but it is thin enough for you to control with ease. This disc is best used to make direct cuts into or around most hoof abnormalities and extreme overgrowth. The black cutoff disc works on all hooved animals and horns. These sanders will get your hooves smooth and pretty for any show. If you're looking for a better way to get a show ready finish on your animal's hooves, the 60 grit or the 120 grit buffing sander disc would be the best option. After using the chain and abrasive disc, go back over the hoof with the buffing sander disc. Smooth out and shine up the hoof. You can glide the buffering sanders across the hoof to give an even smooth and finished look on the hooves. These sanders are perfect for show animals and very light jobs. The buffing sanders work on all hoofed animals and horns. The best practices when trimming horns use the chain disc, green V groove disc, or desired abrasive disc depending on the condition of the desired results. When trimming horns it is best to ensure that the head is firmly secured to prevent movement. You can smooth out the flaky or dead horn material by gliding the disc along the horn and rounding out the tips or the ends. Use the same back and forth motion across all sides of the horn to achieve a smooth and even finish. When cutting overgrown horns and dehorning, it is best to use the green V groove disc or black cutoff disc. Depending on the thickness of the horn, you may need to start on one side of the horn and finish by cutting from the opposite side. Your cuts should meet in the middle of the horn to remove it entirely. The Hoof Boss comes with a one year warranty. For warranty questions and more information, please visit our website at www.mybosstools.com or call us toll free at 1-877-320-8203. International and local calls at 
1-800-926-6234. So that wraps it up. You've learned how to hold, assemble, and adjust and change anything on your new hoof floss. So whether you're trimming a herd of goats or a group of horses, the hoof floss can handle anything you put in front of it. So go out there and trim like a boss.